Welcome to Warrior Class. Where the teachers will pass. And you will too if you pass. All right. So this episode, we're dealing with uh, toxins, poisons, venoms, you know, how to survive them, uh, what are they, how to avoid them. And um, because there's been a lot going on with the use of some type of poison or what have you, uh, we'll we'll look into what the differences are in just a minute. But uh, we got any news regarding? Uh, definitely, definitely um, relevant to what we're talking about as well. I was trying to pull up our chat, our YouTube, real quick there. But um, yeah. So, oh, there you go. Let me turn this down. So um, three articles that I saw that kind of go with what we're talking about. Um, and I know y'all been seeing lately, they've been talking about how they've been um, using what Bob was just discussing offline is not fentanyl uh, or fentanyl. What, what is, how do you really pronounce it, Bob? I believe it's fentanyl, actually. Um, right. That's what we cool everything up to fentanyl. And, <laughs> and, um, so there was three incidents that that i wanted to um highlight um you can check the warriors class oh, was the echo going on that's me excuse me okay. okay um you can check the warrior class um ig to um to check these out further but the first post is about a woman that was going out and she was given a rose by other uh young ladies and they gave her a rose and for something they were they were in the parking lot i know what it was they were in the parking lot of a, a grocery store or something like that asking for money you know how people be doing and she gave them some change and they gave her a rose for it she was saying you know i don't really i don't want the rose it's okay but it's like no they assisted that she take the rose and for some reason she um she grabbed the rose and set it down and she she didn't sniff it or to smell it like you know normal you know normally you do she kind of set it down i think they said they they threw it in her back seat she she said she didn't want it but they still put it in her back seat oh is that what they said on there mm -hmm. okay 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 maybe i maybe i didn't uh, see that part well yeah she, so basically they the girls went she saw the girls come back and look at the car like kind of like to check on her or whatever and so that's when she kind of got suspicious of what it was so um basically what they've been doing what the article says right here is that it's um it's been confirmed in similar situations in in um that like say possibly uh some powder like fitting all of something in roses they've been putting drugs and flowers waiting for them to sniff the substance so they could um you know then basically abduct them so that's one of the things that's been going on that to look out for the second article was about like we talked about the last um i think you guys talked about i don't know if i was here they was talking about how they may tie something on your door to see if you're paying attention the zip tie mm -hmm. thing so it was an article about that um this this father watching his daughter she's coming home from school and she's having zip ties he, t he cut it off three times and then finally he went to ask about it and uh uh, officer told them what they do those zip ties are used um to alert people uh, in that field that you're not that you can be abducted that you're an easy uh target so that's one and then the last one is a woman you can check her story this is also in worry class but her story is on ig as well and she ended up in the hospital with what happened was on her birthday there was a napkin in her um her um door handle and she's like since she's kind of like a germaphobe and she had long nails she kind of grabbed it with her nails and just plucked it away but she forgot she still opened the door with the same hand so she got in the car and she immediately kind of started getting dizzy stuff like that and next thing you know she's in the emergency room and they basically telling her that um, I, I'm not sure what the substance was, but uh, that she could have died and, you know, the whole thing. So basically, this is just a, 
Did you see the article too? Uh, I don't know if you saw No, it. I didn't see that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's talking about it, her own words and everything. And um very, very interesting to hear to hear her, her in her own words describe how she felt like from one minute to the next, how quick it happened. So it's just something for us to, you know, keep your guard up. This can happen to men too. Um definitely. Man got kidneys yeah. and organs and so right. And we're less and we're gonna be a lot less um apprehensive and cautious, you know, being approached by women, which would make us probably easier to even get to, to, to do that with. But they're looking for women more so because of what the business is that they're into. And it's going to be less fight, less, uh, you know, it's going to be easier for men to grab a woman than it's going to be to grab a man in most cases. So, you know, you definitely have a reason to be, you don't have to be afraid when you walk out the door, but be aware, you know. So, hey, everybody, by the way, peace. Ain't been around in a second. All right, so uh, we're going to get into it. Um, you know, everybody in the news is talking about it. Uh, people talking about it. Yeah, they got uh, they got uh, poison. They got so-and-so. A, a person gets, you know, bitten by a snake. I mean, that, that was a poisonous snake. There's no such, well, there, there is such thing, but. We'll get into that in just a second. So I want to talk about the difference between venoms, poisons, and toxins. Terminology, man, is very, very important. It's one of the things I I, I challenge myself to get better in one of the areas. Choice matters, you know, and, and, and we have to stop using the excuses. This ain't our language. Well, what what is our language? And do you speak it? <laughs> so stop that we're communicating in english so let's make sure we communicate especially when it comes to our survival correctly because if we get it wrong it could lead to our demise and it's, it's always our language when we make little slick little stuff we put together when we, you know i self lord and man, all that fit together great you know what right. i'm saying but then it ain't our language when <laughs> right exactly Right. Funny, boy. Yeah, you know, interesting. <laughs> uh, peace, everybody. Now, so, uh, like I said, word choice matters. So, although most people use venoms, toxins, poisons interchangeably, they're not interchangeable. They're not the same. Okay. Uh, and since this is warrior class, let's distinguish venomous things from poisonous things and let's deal with what a toxin is so quick way to separate venomous creatures from poisonous ones if you bite it and you die it was poisonous Hmm. if you bite it and you die it was poisonous mushrooms if if it bites you and you die it was venomous It's an easy guy. Right. So, and, and, and I mean, it's, it's, it's more complex in there because you can also touch some things. Yeah. But most things that are poisonous, you ingest it. You bite it. And then you get sick or die. Oh, it was poisonous. Food poisoning. You know, um, certain foods we eat, you know, uh, can do you in. Certain mushrooms, uh, toadstools, I think are all poisonous, you know. But if it bites you and you die, it's venomous. And then we're going to look at can some be poisonous and venomous. Okay. Um, hey, oh, Bob, Bob, excuse me. Who is the person in the chat? I'm just noticing the secret coin. What are we talking about? What are you talking about? This is a this guy in the chat, Mr. K, high FBI, aka team hat. We'll, 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 we'll deal with that. Uh, we, we get folks trying to be real all the time, so it, it's in fine. The wise words of Paul Pep. Yeah, we, we ain't gonna worry about that right now. Uh, okay. So I'll just say this cocaine is hell of a drug. I'll Minimum. say this. Um, <laughs> not. I don't know that person. I'm saying I'm, I'm just giving a definition. We're talking about definitions, right? An agent provocateur. Mm. With that provocateur, they provoke. 
And if they're successful at that, they know they have you under control. Sisters, if you're walking down the street and a man says, hey, what's up, baby? You keep going. And he said, ah, oh, arrogant bitch. And you stop and say, who the hell you calling the bitch? He's in control. Was your goal to stop and talk to this dude? No. Mm. So the fact that he stopped you and you're talking to him, he's in control. I've been thinking about that, how the people come into this into this thing, right? And what they are doing. Some people just nuts. Some people rabble rousers. But some people are testing us to see if they can derail us from what we're talking about. And if they do, it doesn't matter if we check them. They were in control, not us, because I we didn't come on here to talk to no fool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bro, yeah, bro, that's real shit. So I mean, for me, from now on, I've learned how to just X them out. I'm X them out. My 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 my, my delete finger, it's it's just moving like that. I just <laughs> out of that. That's all. Okay, all right. see, yeah, so, see, you real some. Okay, I wish I, I need a delete button over here. Me too. <laughs> My habit, uh, I'm not sure. So now, okay, so here we go. Now mess up and delete the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so venomous creatures. We're gonna break this down a, a bit more. To deliver their chemicals, venomous creatures bite you. They actively inject their deadly mixture into other creatures through their fangs, spines, stingers, or similar methods of delivery. They actively. That's key word. So a uh, 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 rattlesnake doesn't have to deliver venom into you. It's actively doing that. It doesn't like it bites you and then it's just automatic. It can't help itself. Mm. It, it, that's why baby venomous snakes are often more dangerous because when they bite, they don't have impulse control. It's like, you know, a baby. It's upset. It's crying. So same thing. It bites you, the baby, and it's just pumping the it, it, thing into you. It's, it, it's instinctive to protect itself, and that's what it's doing. And it uses too much, whereas uh, adult snakes can control how much they actually put into you, too. Okay. Now, let's take the inland taipan when we talk about venomous creatures. Inland taipan is believed to have the deadliest venom of any known creature on earth not not just it's a snake but any known creature not just snakes it has the deadliest venom a single drop i didn't say ounce or i said a drop a single drop of the inland taipan's venom can kill 250 thousand mice Whew. I'm going to say that again. One drop, one little drop, boop, like from the dropper, boop, can kill 250,000 mice or 100 adult humans. Wow. A single drop can kill 100 adult humans. Okay. Now, this is why you got to be careful what's out there. Imagine if they put that on a, on a rose, on their hand. Right. You're finished. There, there's no no saving you. I mean, not on the hand, they finish too. Well, well, actually, no. You could touch that and not die, but if it gets you got a cut and it gets in your system, you're done. Uh, you can put that on a knife. That's the first thing you would <laughs> hey. Well, you know you got them, even if you only nick them a little bit. Woo! Darts, arrows. Right, exactly. Arrows, shit. Uh they may put that in things, you know, they may shoot people with it. Rubber bullets. Ooh, right. Get you, but it could cut you and then yeah. you finish. Pierce the oh, skin. So just know that that is the uh inland taipan. Uh and believe it or not, some fools take inland taipans as pets in America, Europe, and Australia, which is I wonder who. Right. I said some folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if one of us 
Uh, nope. People weren't following along with the man. What, what kind of snake is that? It's an Indian Taipan. Man, I won't give me some. I like Thai food, so I'm give me one of them Taipans. <laughs> and the mug, tear that ass up, boy. Uh, yeah. But I was watching the handler handle the Taipan. He got it, you know, yeah, with the thing. And then, and then, uh, you know, he's he's using the thing to put it in the, in the uh, container. Well, this, you know, those hunters and those, hey, mates, and they go out and they <laughs> find wrestle alligators and shit. <laughs> One dude, uh, his, his partner said, Snake. And he picks it up. He said, Oh, oh, this is the. And he's playing with the snake and shit. Uh, see, uh, if you're gentle with him, but at least he was saying, Hey, don't do this at home. But I'm like, Fool, you shouldn't be doing yeah, it. Yeah, don't, don't do it at all. <laughs> right, because if it bites you, <laughs> you're done. One drop, kill 100 adult humans, okay. 250,000 mice. Now, maybe some people get them to get rid of their mice problem because they certainly will. But boy, you get a garden snake, you get a regular, you get regular garden snake. Do that, you ain't got to do all that, man. Cat, right? Exactly. <laughs> a couple of cats. Now, conversely, poisonous creatures, uh, they secrete their harmful chemicals uh, often through their skin, like uh, toads. In other words, right. A poisonous creature can only deliver its toxins if you or another creature eats it or touches it. So you got some plants that also have toxin. I mean, you know, poison, right? You touch it. For example, uh, let's look at the poison dart frog. Little teeny frog is 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 only about two inches long. Okay. Uh, however, they have that's the biggest it gets, two inches long. However, they have enough poison. Now, this can kill an estimated 20,000 mice okay. or about 10 adult humans. It's not a drop. It's a, you know, you touch it. You get the ooze on you. Like, oh, man. Well, you, you, you probably you know you touch that. You know, oh, look, look, you. Bro. <laughs> well, that cute frog would take you out of here. Okay. Like many other poisonous creatures, scientists believe that the poison dart frog gets its deadly concoction. Listen now. It gets its deadly concoction from its environment. Research suggests that the frog eats insects that carry the poison and that these insects get their poison from plants. Wow, that's crazy. I never knew that. There's a cycle going on. Right. And the interesting... The interesting part about that is that so the a lot of the poison dart frogs that are in captivity, their diet has changed. So they are no longer poisonous like this. Right. Exactly. So you go from just from a diet change, you go from being one of the most deadly creatures on earth to being completely benign. And yeah, and that's not just the poison dart frog. You know, changes in diet can do that to all kinds of creatures and and people too. Wow. Yeah. Big Joe, Big Joe, he was the deadly dude on the block. Big Joe kept eating the McDonald's. That's right. That's he poison. A simp now. Hey. I think Bill Bill DeVoe spoke on this too. Um, oh God. We talk about that another another time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's all poison. All right. Terrible. Yeah, the poison was the big button to smile, though. <laughs> but I'm like, that ain't never been poison to me. That's always been, you know, it you know, all depends on what. Let me, let me not say about say depends on what you eat. Let me not. <laughs> oh, we just talked about getting abducted from, from being overly enthralled with. Right, exactly. <laughs> now, venomous and poisonous. Venomous and poisonous. Uh, is there anything like that? Well, the only thing that I was able to find out, and if y'all can find out something else, let me know. But the Asian tiger snake, it's the only snake species that's both venomous and poisonous. Its bite is venomous, and it also stores poison in its skin from its toad prey. So it eats the toads, <laughs> and it gets the poison and it can push that poison out of its uh into its skin so you touch it you can die and it bites you 
you can also die from his venom. Um, and they are, so, so their bites make you bleed out internally. Then we weak as hell then, Bob, because we can't eat the poisonous plant, the poisonous toad, or the poisonous snake. No, no, we can't. Damn. Now, we can eat a venomous snake. Right, 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 right. right, right. Eat his head. Rattlesnake is good, y'all, but do not eat his head or you, you're finished. That's crazy that the animals can eat each other and, and still be alive with the poison, and we can't do that. It's amazing. The, the ecology, you know, is different. And um, as right. far as physical ability, we are the weakest creatures, but, you know, we have the ability to reason that gives us a lot of strength. Uh, although the octopus is the most intelligent creature on the planet and it has a yeah. ability to reason. Um, it's, it's made of it's, it's skin. That's all brain. This, 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 wow. this is an amazing creature, right? But it's also stronger than us. What is the octopus is? Yeah, physically. Oh, yeah. The arms? I didn't realize yeah, yeah. For sure. So it's, it's it, we, we got the short end of the stick. And that's because Ooh. animals have white, more white muscle fiber. We have more red muscle fiber. Yeah, yeah. Uh, white yeah, muscle yeah, fiber yeah. is what gives them that strength. We got to figure that out. Oh, you're gonna train I was going to say, too, <laughs> the white. there are things that we can eat that are poisonous to other creatures. So it's just that they can eat these things and they're not poisonous to them. There are things that we eat that are poisonous to dogs. Great you know, point. great point. Great. Yeah. Point. That's because it's, it's really poisonous to us. We just ain't died off of it. <laughs> we, we we have the ability to reason, but they got more sense because you throw a McDonald's burger down. This has been has been done. Throw a McDonald's burger down in an ant path. They're not eating that, and the ants will tear up real food. Margarine. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing will eat yeah, margarine. Sugar free pop, sugar free uh, candy. Nothing will eat margarine. No molar bacteria will grow on margarine. Man, that's crazy. Cause usually every day I take a put a stick in margarine. I eat it like ice cream. <laughs> I like no, shed spread as well. I do not. Well, that is disgusting. You make, you make <laughs> shed spread popsicles. But that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we get. To see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. but that, that was butter, but uh, growing up, my mother said that, you know, people, they didn't, but people who were poor uh, would give their baby sugar tits, like the mother's sick or the mother passes, she can't, you know, breastfeed. I don't know why they didn't get the old African paradigm with just another sister breastfeed the baby. They would give the baby sugar tits, which is you take butter, you wrap it in cheesecloth, and he puts a little sugar on it. I think he let the baby suck that. Oh my God. To, to <laughs> replace his milk. That's <laughs> crazy. Yes, yes, it is. I'm glad it ain't happened to me. Uh, I had enough I problems had... with eating chitlins. The craziest thing is people doing things like that for their babies back then, but with this whole, like, uh, which I don't know if these if it's still supposed to be going on, but the formula shortage, uh, they're mm -hmm. like saying you can't make anything to give your baby, you're going <laughs> to kill your baby. If you know, if you try to uh, make something for the baby instead of trying to go buy some formula for them. But, you know, clearly there were things that people did before formula that yeah. and they were able to, you know, raise children up just fine. Not to mention, now, I'm telling you, my mother didn't breastfeed. She was, which is crazy. Yeah, either. She was breastfed. She didn't breast and she she says she hates that. She listened to the doctors telling her, excuse me, Ma, telling your business, but it's, I mean this been that her nipples were too small to breastfeed, which is a lie because they will grow from the baby's suction, right? Anyway, but so they told her she believed that. So you know what kind of milk I grew up on? Goat. Mm-hmm. That's the Chicago Mississippi. Better than cow. You, you, you built the bullet. Yeah. The cow would have been worse for you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, uh, that's, that's wild, to, to Omeniki's point when they say, you, you got to buy this formula. That's all marketing. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. There was a whole effort 
it to move birth from hot from you know from midwives and from the home to the hospital and all of that was supported by the different industries the diaper industry you know formula all of that stuff so there was a there was a whole campaign to do that it wasn't just your mother you know they 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 went around doing that to everyone that's why everyone is so oriented toward the hospital when it comes to giving birth now my, my mother had to advocate for my wife when she decided, you know, having the children at home. Right. Because her sisters and stuff, no, yeah, that's crazy and all mm -hmm. that. And my mother was like, um, I'm I'm one of 13 children. We were all born at home. Mm. We were all born fine. And everybody in our neighbor, you know, neighborhood, really not neighborhood, but in our area was fine and they were born at home. Hospital was a hundred miles away from Yazoo, so they couldn't go to no hospital anyway. So all they knew was a midwife. It's still almost a hundred miles away. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I think sixty miles. It's pretty know. far. Yeah. All right. So, um, it's good to see our sister in the chat, Boomy. What's up? Yeah. So I'm uh, the next. What? So what? Are toxins. All right, so what are toxins? Okay, unlike venom and poison, the word toxin is not defined by a specific method of delivery. Rather, a toxin has a broader meaning. It is a biological produced chemical substance that impacts biological functions in other organisms. In this respect, anything that is synthesized by human or in intelligent life is, is not considered a toxin. Rather, a toxin is a chemical substance that is synthesized, produced by human activity. In short, toxins and toxins are narrower definitions for the word poison. So, so basically, it's just it's, it's, it's just another just another meaning for poison, except this is. A synthesized version of a poison. Man made. So, man made. You know, uh, toads have poison, that's natural, but. Right. Fentanyl is poison. Right. Uh, most of the, the, the medicines we take are poison, they're just right. synthesized. Copy that, copy that. All right. So, getting roofed uh, and how you can prevent it, since this is what's been going on lately. And I didn't even know, like I said, I was talking about it. I didn't realize that people use Visine as, as a roof. Didn't even know that. So um, so if you, if you go to, I, I wouldn't know this you know, personally, but if you go to a strip club, it'll say on the sign, uh, things you can't bring in, guns, whatever, and Visine. You say, well, oh. my, what, my eyes hurt. It's because they don't want you knocking out the strippers and taking advantage of them. Now, uh, and, and, and so you said, well, how, how did you know? Yeah, yes, I read it on the sign as I went there, not to watch strippers, but to film a movie called Champion Road, where I played the character Celine. Mm -hmm. And there's a, fight, there's a fight that goes on there. Yes, there's a fight. That, <laughs> there's a fight that happens in this strip club uh, that Celine is part of. So, who, who wrote the movie? R.L. Scott wrote that movie. Oh, all right. I directed it. So y'all can check it out. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. You see me walking to it's a famous strip club here, and I walk into it, and uh, it's, it's 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 in Stone Mountain. I would have no knowledge of that either, Bob. If I wasn't security in a, at a strip club, that's the only way. The only reason I know of this that he's right. I was security. Never even worked, worked inside. I stayed outside in the parking lot. Even, even the strippers who were there, as they walked past, I turned my head. I did the same thing. Look at them, you know. <laughs> it was a sickening job. I quit because I just couldn't take it no more. I got tired of looking at strippers every day. I just thought you were turning me. your head. <laughs> oh, my, my fault. Yeah, I got tired. <laughs> The peripheral. The loud. I love hard to keep track of <laughs> uh, I bet said it's okay, Baba. You wanted those Magic City lemon pepper wings. <laughs> See, that, that's when I was still eating chicken, and, and they had great wings. That and that's that wings. If you want good wings, I mean, it ain't it ain't about the wings. Seriously, so get it. Getting a movie, a movie or getting those lemon pepper wings. 
And only so, time. Joker only time. And, and Stone Mountain has great steak. So you I'm guys are connoisseurs of strip club food as well. Well, strip clubs, they do the best food because they want to keep you there. That's what that's what I heard. I heard they do the best food. Right, uh, right. So anyway, right. we know we are not strip club patrons. In case y'all don't know, we joking. I hope y'all know. Yeah, I hope y'all know. Maybe y'all don't. But I hope you, know. Know. you know, hey, hey, shout out to the sex workers if that's what you're doing. You know, do your thing. Subscribe, uh, like, subscribe, and like, like here. Donate and donate. Yeah, you can get to the donate. point. If, if you don't get your job, right? That <laughs> manifesto says strip club foodies. Right. <laughs> it was a myth or not? That's not. A, that's not a myth. I used to carry that. Uh, I manifesto carry visine in in my. Um, I had a, a, a survival vest. I used to carry it in my survival vest. You're not gonna catch this cold out if you put that in there. From what I heard. <laughs> All right. So rupees. I'm sorry. All right, yeah. Roofies and how you can prevent it. Since this toxin can go to work within as quick as 15 minutes, it's important to learn different ways to avoid this from happening. Roofie is slang term for rufinol, and um, and sometimes I think they just use it for anything that'll knock you out, but it's, it's right, right, right. So so <laughs> right, when it's when it's that 15 minutes, that's the other thing, but rohypnol itself, it takes about 30 minutes. So oh, yeah, they call anything that knock you out. Right. Uh, the date rate drug, so called. Exactly. Uh, so it's pronounced rohypnol, mm -hmm. and it's defined as a tablet of a powerful sedative and hypnotic drug that is not licensed for medical use, but is used illicitly. A roofie is also known as a date rate drug. Many times this toxin is odorless, colorless, and tasteless, resulting in this victim having no idea they're consuming it. Uh, if, you, if you see also, and I'll post this on the Warrior Class page, this guy showing how slick he could put a pill in your drink while he's talking to you. Um, he's, he was a professional. I don't know if he's a professional roofer, but he was some type of professional, but he showed you how people do it. So anyway... Um, Many times, oh, let's go. The effects of rufinol, of, how, how you pronounce it again, Bob? Rufinol. Rufinol. Rohypnol. You can see in there, it's got like hypnosis. Hypnol. Rohypnol. Oh, rohypnol. Okay, okay. Rohypnol can be felt in 30 minutes or less. Other date rate drugs include GHB and ketamine. GHB or gamma hydroxy boot. Butric acid? <laughs> gamma hydroxy butric acid, is that right? Gamma hydroxy butyric acid. Butyric hydroxy butyric acid is also known as cherry meth or goop. Yeah, because nobody ain't running around the street saying gamma hydroxy <laughs> butyric acid. <laughs> you know what I mean, you got in that gamma hydroxy butyric acid. You got something to be like, what? <laughs> what? I also, it's also known as cherry meth or goop. It works within 15 minutes, and its effect, effects can last for up to six hours. Ketamine is known as cat. Cat value, mm -hmm. mm, special K, and super acid, and it's an anesthetic. Hmm. Ketamine reduces pain and distort perception of sight and sound. When consumed at high doses, all of these toxins have extreme and deadly effects on the body, such as affecting the heart rate in the digestive system. Mixing these drugs with alcohol puts the user at an increased risk, risk for complications and can lead to death. Roofies are commonly used at large social gatherings such as college parties, restaurants, bars, and clubs. When going to these type of events, it's best to go out with a group of people you trust and stay together. If you have to go to the bathroom, ensure you know who is holding your drink. Also, ensure that you're looking out for, for others in the group. Another simple thing you can do to prevent getting roofy is how you hold your drink. It's very important. If it's an uh, open cup, hold your drink on top so that the majority of the opening is covered by your hand. You know what I'm talking about? Like this right here. Just hold it just like that when you walk. Right. There you go. Um 
hold your drink up to the top so that the majority is open and is covers is covered by your hand when you're not drinking it. If lids are available, then that's an easy way to prevent someone from sliding something in your drink. While it's common to encounter date rate drugs while you're out, 55% of date rates occur within the victim's own home. This happens because at home, most people put their guard down and feel as if they're in a safe place. Yet 25% of reported date rates are committed by someone very close to the victim, such as a current ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or even an ex-spouse. When at home, it's best to always have a lid on your drink and ensure that your container are in a safe place, such as in the back of the fridge and back of the cabinet or in another room altogether. If you start to feel strange or unsafe, call a comrade or 911 if you must immediately. Hopefully none of us ha ever have to go through that situation. Yeah. I hear that ketamine's pretty I tell you even when like I'm at their house and uh now I I I loosen up a bit but one time Belay bought me some uh he went out <laughs> came chai back tea. And bought me some uh chai tea or coffee or something right he said I got this for you bye bye no you didn't <laughs> no you didn't. I was I was I was I was I was still wet behind the ears I didn't know <laughs> I mean you taste it first <laughs> like I said uh I'm I'm real careful when 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 family members you know I'm sitting there my wife say here yeah, I said, oh, no, you take now and do it. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I'm like, damn, no, I don't do that with her. But uh, you know, with, with some people that you know, I'm, I'm 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 cool with. They give me something, you know. I I, I stop and think about, have I insulted them lately? Yeah. Yeah, and that was years ago too. I think that was my first couple years. Yeah. What, what was you saying about ketamine? I'm in the yeah, about six months ago. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I hear that that's pretty commonly used too. Like as far as recreational drugs, people basically sniff it like uh like cocaine. So it's it's definitely out there. That's a cow yeah. tranquilizer. They use that when the right. Know, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, who you know sniffing ketamine like that? I don't know anyone who's doing it. I never this heard is from I, research. Oh, I got you. I never heard. It's kind of like our. It's kind of like when we just had to go to the strip club. Exactly. Uh, no, it ain't like that. Exactly. <laughs> it is not at all like that. <laughs> not even close. All right. All right. Moving on to chloroform. Uh, you've seen it many times before. A bad guy is silently sneaking up on his victim. He is skilled, patient and inching forward bit by bit. His steps are light, but his hands are busy, pressing a piece of cloth to the opening of a glass bottle. Then with one swift motion, he jumps on back of his vic on the back of his victim and presses the cloth to their mouth and nose. Seconds later, the victim is unconscious. But does chloroform really work like that? Chloroform was used by criminals, but not like in the movies. Chloroform, also known as trichloromethane, is a powerful anesthetic used in surgery since the 19th century. Chloroform works by inhalation and has been used by criminals in order to subdue or even kill their victims. For example, Joseph Harris was charged in 1894 with using chloroform to rob people while serial, serial killer H.H. H. Holmes used chloroform overdoses to kill women. In fact, there were many cases when chloroform was used to commit crimes. In the beginning of the 20th century, it was still widely used as an anesthetic, which made it easier for criminals to acquire some of the substance. Hollywood creators were quick to create this image of a powerful weapon, which can sedate an adult human within seconds. However, if you sneaked up on somebody and pressed a damp, sweet-smelling cloth to their face, you would catch a headbutt in the face. Scientists, exam excuse me, scientists ex estimate that it would probably take around five minutes for an adult person to become unconscious from breathing chloroform through a cloth with chlor excuse me from breathing through a cloth with chloroform in it. That is a long time. 
which will be filled with fighting, stabbing, shooting, reloading, and shooting some more. In fact, the bad guy would get tired from holding the cloth and would end up facing an angry person after he drops it. So even though, you know, like, of course, we definitely know that, you know, if it, it takes time with chloroform, it can still be used as like a secondary way to sedate you if they already have you. You know, if they have you in a vulnerable position already. Right. You tied up or whatever. and they they, want to Yeah. Then they can use the chloroform to knock you back out if, if they need to. Or if they are. If, if you're being intimate with someone. True. You're laying down. They, they could have already soaked the uh, the pillow. Mm -hmm. the chloroform and you, your head to the side. They just right. push over a little bit right into your face. You're not paying much attention. Mm -hmm. And you out of there, or, or and, and if, if you start like, what the hell? And, and you're moving, they put it on your face. If they're on top of you, right? You're out of there. Now, did we mention? Uh, is it odorless as well? Uh, no, it's not odorless. Okay, well, that's good. It's sweet, sweet smelling, but you may think that's some Co sweet, right? Some perfume, colognes, right? So mm. that's the thing. It's, it's you're like, man, it smells good. It's sweet. Mm. It's like a bakery. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh, <laughs> man, I feel dizzy. You're out of there. Did you say bacon? Bakery, not bacon. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Uh, well, I don't know why. You just telling on yourself today. No. <laughs> man, right. this is great. Then it's, it's not like bacon. I'm leaving now. When I was young, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, nasty bacon smelling. <laughs> um all right peace to power peace to power family doc peace doc I uh fennel. Oh, please, doc. all right peace doc fennel fennel can you overdose from fennel left on shopping carts or a car door handle um Baba, I'm sorry before we go here there's one one that is that nobody talks about anymore. And I just want to ask you about, and I'm pretty sure you probably know about it off the top of your head, mm -hmm. but matter of fact, I'll save that. For, I'll finish this and then ask you about it. Right. Um, can you overdose from Finnell left in shopping carts on car door handles or handle warnings about the dangers of drug residue on shopping carts and car door handles and roses went viral this week, claiming deadly drugs like fit, um, uh, I keep wanting to say fentanyl. Like, um, how you pronounce it one more time? Fitten fentanyl? Could be. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be right. I want to be right. Fentanyl could be left behind to enter your body through contact with your skin. And uh, again, those three uh, incidents he's talking about—they're on our IG page. Go check them out. All you have to do is rub your nose or touch your child's mouth. They say. Children just being exposed to the powder of residue is a bad situation that can turn deadly. But the chances of someone getting sick, let alone overdosing from residue, is highly unlikely, but it is possible. So what's really going on? Right. So we're, you know, the, the cynic in me says one thing, right? I don't ever want to cast doubt on a victim or, 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 or anything right but but can you imagine if the people who were physically enslaved came back and they're telling you all these horrors and you said man that didn't happen some horrific stuff happened you know and, and a lot of stuff that may be unbelievable to some of us. Um, but then also on the end where people who weren't scared were out there, you know, my, my grandfather, on uh, my mother's side, for years I thought his name was Doug, D-U-G. I was like, why do they spell it D-U-G? I was like, just some, you know, country black stuff back in the day, Doug. That Doug's not his name. I found out later his name's Aaron, Aaron Dobbins. Doug, now his, he named his son Doug Dobbins after that uh, Uncle 
Hank, and I, I'll tell you why they call him Uncle Hank. It's not Hank, it's Hank. But anyway, uh, they called him D-U-G because he dug, dug so many graves for white folks. He wasn't a grave digger. <laughs> it's talking about he, would. he would feed the neighborhood. So he would go to the white man who got a cow. Black folk around them, they, they were sharecroppers. They handled. He take the cow, kill it, cut it up, give it to the neighbors. Everybody eating. White man comes say, "Hey, uh, Mr. Doug. Uh, they call him Doug, my Mr. Doug. Um, uh, did, did you see my cow? He said, "Oh no, I haven't seen your cow." He said, "Well, the the the, the tracks show that it went behind your house." He said, well, come on back with me and let's see. <laughs> I said, no, nah, Mr. Doug. <laughs> I ain't going over there. I believe you. They knew about him, him and his brother. My mother told me him and his brother law were putting in work on Caucasian. They had killed so many. Um, but it, it left them tainted, I, I guess you say spiritually. Because certain stuff they wouldn't tolerate that they should tolerate, right? And that's all I say on that. But, um, but they and I ain't saying because they were they were killing white folks. It's just they they weren't just killing white folks. They were killing. Mm. But you know, so those stories too. A lot of people be like, man, they wouldn't you know couldn't have done that back then. You know, so I'm, I'm 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 hesitant to doubt when a person's telling me certain things unless it's something from my experience I know is an impossibility. Mm. But fentanyl doesn't work the way people are talking about. Like it can that you could touch it, and you know, especially maybe you have an allergy to it and it knock you out or whatever. Maybe that's why we haven't heard. They may be doing this a lot. We just haven't heard more because. It's not affecting people like the people doing it thinking. Uh, or they could be using something else. Uh, because the first part, I said, man, these people just trying to get likes. But there's many ways to get likes without doing that. So um, I don't know if it's fentanyl, but it may be something else, something stronger. Which would be yeah. more frightening because that means something more insidious out there that we don't know about. What about what, what happened to anthrax, uh, Bob? Anthrax is still out there, but anthrax, you're not you're not gonna do any human trafficking if you give somebody anthrax. I was I was just wondering if but also <laughs> anthrax, you couldn't put it on the rose and you carrying it around. Right. Right. Now and, somebody, and it's not available like that, is it? They got on a gas mask. And long gloves, and you take that rose from them, you even speak to them. <laughs> they say, hey, and they got the gas mask on and long gloves. You say, What the hell is this? And it's not available like that, right? You can't have you don't have access to that like that. You got access just like you got access to fentanyl. They are both illegal. Oh yeah. Dark webs type stuff, I guess. This cash who can make it. Okay. This cash who can make it in their house. Right. So, I, I, I agree with I see what you're mailing, saying. they were putting that on the on on envelope. They were mailing right uh, uh white supremacists were mail, sending out mail to black folks, you know, black neighborhoods and stuff. And like they, like in Chicago, they end up on the news. So people were looking out for I mean, I, even though it didn't make much sense, okay, you're looking out for this type of mail, they just sent it as something else. So so, um, so what do you think, Bob? Because I know, like, I get what you're saying. Like, oh, hold on, hold on one second, real quick. Now, Courtney, that may be ricin. So, ricin is a deadly poison too. Okay. Uh, that 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 may be used. It could be mm. right. Okay. Because I I see what you I know what you're saying. Like, you don't want to say some people might be making some of this stuff up, but at the same time. I'd be amazed at what people make up. I'd be amazed at the I'd be amazed at the stories of what's true 
And I'm amazed at what extent people go to to just fucking lie for attention. So it's like a mixture. It really is. I was, well, I was with- now when when the abductions. You know, we were teaching workshops how to not get abducted and everything, right? Uh, I started watching uh, pretty much all the videos. I, I one night I said, "Dear, you know, I." I be up late. I'm watch these videos. I, I spent about eight hours watching all these people and the way they would uh, story time. I was abducted. A person abducted is not talking story time like this. He, we, I'm gonna entertain you. <laughs> this is bullshit right here. And then when you yeah. listen, to it, you can tell. Dramatic, right? So some of the stuff they were saying, you know, and they almost got me, but they stopped at McDonald's, and when they stopped. I tried to lock, and they didn't put the child lock, and I got out, and I ran. So I was almost abducted. And I'm like, really? You're going to take what really is harming people, destroying lives, destroying whole families. You're going to take that so you can get some likes. And I said it on, on you know, one of my posts. So you're going to get, you ain't shit. To do that, you ain't shit. Because people's lives are actually being affected. They're being taken. In Atlanta, it's the number one city for human trafficking. And so we're in the midst of it, right? Uh, And the reason why, if you wonder why it's the number one, is because Atlanta has the busiest airport in the world. And that's why, because so much going, you know, and, and, and you know, they don't want to stop it. I can easily figure that out. So the FBI who deals with human trafficking couldn't figure that out and monitor the airports. They don't want to stop that shit. For every person taken, uh, it's at least $40,000. So even the police are snatching folks. Now, I won't say even because I mean they, they corrupt the shit anyway. But they're snatching folks. And been snatching folks. I used to sn- I used to yes, for all kinds of reasons. I used to sneak and watch my son walk to the bus stop uh when he first started going to the bus stop for uh middle school. I would I would watch him. He looked to see if I'm watching, I you know, hide, mm-hmm. make him feel like he's walking on his own, and you know, he got it. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yeah, you can you can walk down there, but I, I gotta keep my eye on them, so I, I you know hide and watch. Luckily, I'm watching, and the police stop him. So what the fuck is this? And they talking to him and everything, and I see the police hand out out go out the uh, can you see my hand out the out the window, and he goes like this. I say, oh hell no! So I run down there. I say, hey, what's going on? They look at me. Who are you? He said, oh, that's my dad. It's all right. We're just making sure, you know, he's good. I said, well, you were calling him over. Yeah, because we couldn't hear him. Yeah, oh, okay. And so the white cop was saying that the black cop is looking at me like he wants to rip my goddamn throat out. Because he just lost at least $40,000. Mm. Like, they, they come for it. I'm already um, I'm gonna take both of them out of here, get my son, take him home, pack up, and we getting the hell out of Atlanta. But you will not take my son. And I do not have a problem with saying that here because for anybody, I don't care what your title is, I don't care what your title is, brother, sister, police, FBI, the president of the United States, if you try to harm mine. I will protect them onto the last breath that I have in my body. So what do I care about you coming and you're going to come at me uh, and arrest me for what? Yes, I will protect my child against you. Of course, if you're trying to abduct my child. Right. I didn't move on them with, with him just saying, come here. But got the, he wasn't going to get in that car. He hadn't broken any laws, and then you and then you tell me it's because making sure you're okay, 
And then I think the fool said something like, uh, we'll, we can take him to school. No, no, you can't. He's good. <laughs> Why? He's All of a sudden, they're so friendly and, and helpful. Right. And so at that point, I said, come on, son. I walked him to the bus stop and just stood there with him. I know that's right. Like, yeah, my daughter now. Uh, I mean, once she's only 13. But she's in high school. She, she's she's in 10th grade. I, I'm right there. I, I walk her. I don't. I, the first two days, I walked her all the way to the stop. But now I walk her right. I'm right across the caddy corner. And I'm standing right there. They won't let you go into school. They told me, like, you can't, you can't come into school, sir. You can't come. You can't walk into this. What you mean? What my daughter in the when, when, when the school first started, uh, when uh, we went to the, not orientation, but the registration, right? They they walked through. People didn't have masks. You know, they gave them masks. So here, here. So we, we took the mask. This one father was like, I'm not, I'm not wearing a mask. It wasn't a problem when I walked through the uh, metal detectors. They didn't say I had to have a mask. I'm not putting on the mask. They put him out. Well, this child is there to be registered, so the child stay to be registered as long as the child put on a mask. They put him out. So, so once we registered our daughter, we're walking out. So you know what, what's going on, brother? He said, "Man, you know they, they won't let me in. They put me out because I'm with the mask." And my wife said she heard him say, "I did," you know. And uh, yeah, they, they wouldn't let the man in. So um, you know. I'm just saying that to say there's there's stuff out here. Be careful and stand your ground, right? Um, so he stood his ground. He did get put out, but he stood his ground. I'm not putting that on. You know, hey, I'm with you. I, I put my mask on, but I'm with you. I put my mask on anyway because I ain't trying to. But as far as abductions, know that. Your children could be in danger. I told y'all before, the people trying to snatch the children up, they had this big garbage, beat up garbage truck, probably where they dumped the children at, and they talking about doing cable though. And our cable's down. I said, uh, our cable is not down. Well, I had my son say it. Yeah, your cable's down. We don't have cable, we got fiber. So that's not cable. They don't have to do shit. Right. My cable line, we don't have no cable line, right? So I'm like, nah. Uh, so I, I said, uh, I said, okay, you open the door. So he said, okay, I open the door, and he moved. I opened the door, and when I opened it, chick right there ready to snatch me. Dude standing out there. I guess when she snatched, if the person fought back, he go over there and you know, uh, help carry him to the truck. When she did that, and I'm standing there looking at her, she. <gasps> Why the shocking? Why you got your hands out there? You gonna snatch somebody? So you all right? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Uh, uh, I think we got the wrong house. Yeah, back to him. All right, baby. Then they go get in the uh, beat up garbage. These cable folks, cable folks, get in the beat up garbage truck and drive off. I would see that truck every few months drive past. Our area, so they they were still snatching folks. Y'all be careful out here. And now they they think they're being sophisticated. So let me give the person this right now. So the sister said, okay, she got dizzy, but my husband took her to the hospital. They so cold. They saw them pull in, go into the restaurant. They were going to take her out. Mm. Even though her husband was there. Right. So they don't they don't care. That means it's more than one person, probably more than two. Yeah. They don't care if a man is there too with his wife. Right. We, we're talking forty, fifty thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? All right. So they're willing to take that chance. Right. 40, I'm gonna do something to you to get this money. If we get three cats and split that, see, so that's fifteen, that's that's you know, ten. Uh, Twelve thousand, these thirteen thousand, and you, and it's a kidnapping charge already. So, uh, uh, some assault, battery, right. all that stuff. That don't, that ain't nothing. They gonna drop all that. You know what I'm saying? We 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 face a kidnapping, so it don't matter what happened to the, the dude over here. Right. So just you know, be, be careful out here, y'all. Um, of course, I'm gonna say get trained. 
Yeah, but, but but you know we bias, but, but we're biased because we know something. Let me tell you, one of the biggest podcasters podcasts in the world right now is this lady, this black girl. That she she got her name is I don't know her real name. She go by Don't Call Me White Girl. Uh huh. Yeah. She, she got one of the biggest podcasts, in the, and I, I so I said, let me see what she's talking about because everybody's you know she recovered whole blah 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 extra blah went to prison. So I watched the show one time. She don't know nothing about self-defense or nothing, but she was talking about what's been going on with these women. And the first thing she said, I'm going to go get trained. She was like, women, y'all need to go out and get trained, not just with these firearms, but learning how to get a man up off of you. And I, I just thought it was the most brilliant. Nobody's saying that, but us and her. You know, well, nobody's really saying I that. had a, a, uh, a sister call. I don't know if y'all remember it. Uh, she was a, a stripper. She's gonna have other strippers right. same with us. Yeah, I think her uh, they know. think about that. Right. Oh no, they definitely they think about it be every night. Like I said, right. I, I did security with them, and one of the reasons why they build relationships with this with security guards, and, and you can ask them. This is a real thing. A lot of strippers end up messing with security guards, and the reason is because at the end of the night, that's when they're vulnerable. At the end of the night, they got this all this money they take into their car. They don't have on their makeup. They don't have on the fake whatever, whatever. They being their they absolute self. They're afraid, and this and this and this guy has to most of the time walk them from outside the club to in their car. And usually, it goes further than that. They they usually and the the, the, the guard don't have to say nothing. Usually, the, the girl will be like, "Well, I, I was going to the Waffle House. You want to go get something to eat with me?" Because it's still danger once they leave the club. So yeah, going to Waffle and it don't stop there because they still afraid to leave the Waffle House and go home. You know what I'm saying? So that's how those things end up happening. It's they they always thinking about it. Are they training? No, because we're in the South and they figure they got that thing on them, and they got these dudes with them things on them and all this, and th- and that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? They end up trusting in, sec- in the security guards and boyfriends. It's not going to always be there for them. And and trusting in the gun. Now believe me. I don't have a problem with firearms. Yes, that is why some shoes uh, pills. But you can't just rely on the firearm. You can't just rely on the knife. The the, the knife, it can be taken. Or knife out your hand. The gun, it can jam, it can be taken. These, only way they're taken, you got beaten, you got your hands cut off. Right. You got kept. These, you can always rely on. You can always rely on this. Your knees, your elbow, throwing. You can, you can let biting. I can Worst case, you, you can use these to get the weapon that the person is trying to. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Look, I, 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 I got into a fight with a dude. Had a pistol in sweatpants. I'm tearing his ass up, but I swing hit hard, and the pistol whoop falls out. The whole fight shifts now. Because I ain't thinking about punching him no more, and he ain't thinking about getting punched. And this dude whipping my ass, he's thinking I'm gonna get that pistol. Game changer. I look at him, he looks at me, we both go for it. And because he was, it was closer to him. I couldn't rely on getting the pistol now and shooting him. You gotta get him. I got it right. <laughs> so I said, "Shit!" Boom! Hit him with my shoulder, knock him off. When he rolls off, I get the I get the pistol. He hauls ass, right? And I could have shot him, but the whole idea I could have shot him in the first place. But the whole idea was, right? We throwing hands, and so I was like, "Well, I ain't shooting the man. We throwing hands, right?" Um, I, he got to run off. Never saw him again. You know, my my whole thing of well, you know, you don't let a dude leave because you may see him somewhere not expecting him. The whole disagreement was a disagreement. That required throwing hands, not putting a yeah. in it. Right. So then you ain't got really the, the threat shouldn't be there for death next time. Right. If you did. But it wasn't a deadly threat. It would have been oh. when, once he went for that pistol. Right. If he so, had put his hands on it first, then it would have been deadly. But and I didn't even have a knife on me that time. Never again would you <laughs> don't, but don't try to walk on now. He got it now, though. He got it now. Don't try it now. So when that fell out, that's is that and is this. That's it. That's right. it. 
if I had a knife, I could have pulled that, cut him, stopped him easily. But I'm like, oh, shit. So, boom, shoulder bumped him. He rolls off. Then I grabbed my pistol. I wasn't trying to eat. Also, I wasn't trying to throw flying kicks. You know, hey, man, it is. <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking about that. I was just thinking. <laughs> well, that's why I got that thing from when people, you know, with, with uh, um, they about to the day. Hey, man, it is. And it's hot, like, hoy, hoy, hoy. That's, that shit's so ridiculous. And that's the whole <laughs> idea of. Uh, I love ice cream. Of, 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 Ice Cold Carter, who is like the penultimate martial artist versus somebody that is practical right. in their martial arts, right? So so let me read this compliment from um, from uh, Ayapo Yapo. I, I, we appreciate this. She says, I swear, navigating this world. Does it he? I, I, I can't tell. I, I can't. Okay, so I apologize. I do not know. So they said, because I can't see your picture. So I'm going to say they. But, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Yapo, you can let us know. I don't trust in the gun when my legs can still run. Got to zigzag a lot, though. You better zigzag I, anyway. I, 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 yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk on that. On, on the so day. let me just read what she said. She said, I swear navigating this world has got to be like trying to navigate a minefield. Streams like this are here as a map to where potential mines are buried and how to avoid them if possible. We need to pin that. If there's a way to pin that comment on this one here. Thank you very much because that's exactly in your own words what we want to do. Right. Now, as far as zigzagging when you run, um, we train for professionals. So if you if you can handle a professional, then you can handle or oh, run the mill cat, right? A professional shooter. You're zigzagging. You better not <laughs> zigzag in a pattern. That's what I was about to <laughs> We don't shoot where you're at. Right. Where you're going to be at. So always remember that. So you have to be, be you right. run like you got a seizure or something. Run like you're having a seizure. Right. <laughs> right. But right. you know, you're not going to be running fast if you're doing that. Right. If you're trying to haul ass and you just zig right here, then you zag right here, then you zig over here, you're going to get... You got to take time to think to do that. Right. That's going to slow you down. That's why running away from the pistol or, or rifle is not the best strategy. Running to it is the best strategy. You say, what? Because I either got to be... If it's a pistol, I got to be, you know, if I got to, I'm going to block away. Well, hell yeah, I'm going to run. I'm all ass, right? <laughs> if, so I got to be either far, far away, or I got to be really close. I usually go for really close. That mid-range, running, karate kicking, <laughs> roll, uh, none of that, that ain't working. You got to charge that fool. <laughs> Because what you got to lose, it's like the mud say, well, what I got to lose is, shit, I can gain $40,000. Right. So I'm going to go for, well, your life is on the line. I can live. If I stop this woman shooting me, I got to take that chance. Got to. Because also, you see this thing, well, it's close enough for me to grab. I can shoot from here. Thank you, sir, for I clearing that, clarifying so that up. All right, I'll follow you. Yeah. Out here, no, but I can shoot from here. Just, just so you know, with that. Uh, thank you, Yapo. I thought you that was a, it was a he. Uh, uh, I you, also, Nigeria, because my, my my wife is in Nigeria right now, so I can tell it. Now, so I, I I don't tell when when we're about to travel. I tell you after the traveling happened. So you ain't doing a, a Ron Brown on, on on my wife or something blowing a plane up or some shit. Mm -hmm. So she's there. I won't tell you when she's coming back. Yeah. I'll tell you when she's back, though. You know, so yeah, my wife's in Nigeria now. That's why I, my, my back is good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine now because she ain't making me work. Because when, when she she put me to work, she's like, hey, I need so and so. I need, yeah, it's 500 bags in the car. My back is hurt. Oh, it's all right. And I, <laughs> I can't say nothing. She's pregnant, so I can't be like, you carry him. 
So I got a cat bag. Uh, so she knows she got me now. I've narrowly avoided harm. You reading the same thing? And quite a few gun-related incidents. Now that I think about it, guy turned around, pulled out on me, and my friend started pulling trigger. Gun click. We ran. Oh shit! You were lucky. It's mm-hmm. fire. Was you about to say something? Um, yeah, I was going to say, since we talked about toxins and poisons, I also just wanted to speak briefly on activated charcoal. Um, it's something that it's a substance that you can take. It's activated carbon that can help pull some toxins and poisons out of your system. Um, it's uh, in a lot of different kits as far as like uh, um, they use it like when uh, there's drug overdoses, when situations where they I don't know if they still pump people's stomachs. But they introduce that to the system to pull some of the toxins out. Uh, You know, you can put it, mix it with water and drink it. Um, Another great thing about it is that you can take it before. If you're going out to a club and you know you're going to be drinking, you can take it before you go out and you can take it when you get home. It helps uh, stem um, like hangovers, you know. But also, if you think about it, I'm sorry, alcohol is a toxin. So, yeah, right. Exactly. And if you think about it, if someone's trying to roofie you or something like that, that may be something that can aid you with, you know, not not being affected so much by whatever's in those roofies or, you know, any of those substances, because you already have something working in your system to pull toxins out. Now, I'm not saying that's an absolute you know, cure for being roofied. I definitely wouldn't say that. But you, if especially if you don't drink a lot, if you're not drinking every day, if you just go out every once in a while, um, I would definitely, I, I don't drink a lot, but, you know, if I were going to go out to a club or something like that, I would definitely, and I knew I'd be drinking, I would definitely take some activated charcoal beforehand. You don't um, get drink every day no more? I don't drink every day. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, let, me say, let me say this. Um, also, don't be alone as much as possible. Right. Yeah. yeah of course. One of the worst yeah. songs ever that so I I drink by myself, smoke by myself. Oh yeah. Sing by my goddamn self for real. By my mm-hmm. goddamn self. So I say you big dummy. <laughs> you do everything by yourself. Now, if that's just your lot in life, but try your best to be with people. Uh, I was at the hospital, so when, when, when I have to go to the hospital, my wife has to go to the hospital, which is rare. We make sure we're there. So when I went to the hospital for the heart attack, right, they were like, well, you can't come in until you get a room, which is crazy. So you can come in when I get a room, but you can't come into the emergency area. Insurance. When, when she went to the hospital, I, I sat in the emergency room. Damn, I wasn't hearing, and they ain't stopped me either. But once I was in the room, I was there. But before that, when I went to the hospital, when I had the, the strokes in 2012, all the day she's there with me. I'm fine. She'd be there all day, all day. One day she couldn't make it. I forgot. One of the children had to do something. She had to take them somewhere. Uh, a nurse comes in I'd never seen before. So I said, who, uh, who are you, ma'am? She said, I'm, I'm a nurse, I'm, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so, I'm the whatever charge nurse. I said, oh, the normally the charge nurse is so-and-so. Yeah, she's off today. I said, this is all right. So she takes out a little bottle. I said, what is that? What is that? Oh, it's so you don't get blood clots. I said, normally when... They uh, give me a shot in the stomach so I don't get blood clots. Yeah, this one's going through your IV, you know, because your stomach can get sore. I said, oh, I'm fine. You can go ahead and stick me in the stomach again. I got I got a big stomach. You can stick me in the stomach. No, no, we're going to. I said, oh, okay. Nobody's there for me. Advocate for me. Make sure no crazy shit. She puts the stuff in there and she's watching. I said, now, what is this called? She don't say nothing. Shit. Now I'm up. I let her put it in there. I said, what is this called? She's taking notes. And then it hit me and my body just tensed up 
my jaw open. I, I, I couldn't close my mouth. My body bent up. I said, uh, well, in my mind, I'm like, she gave me, she gave me cyanide. Cyanide mm-hmm. make you tense so much you break your own back, right? And that's what it felt like. So I'm all bent up, and I was just like, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. This bitch is going to lose. It's all in my head. I'm looking at her. That's all I could do. Is look. I couldn't do nothing else. I'm looking at her. She's looking at me like, what the fuck? And I straighten my body up. Now, I'm not saying I'm a Superman. I'm saying, thank God that I had enough will to fight through whatever that was. But that's not to say they they couldn't up the dose no more, and I, and my will couldn't overcome whatever it was. But after that, I felt like I was in a fight. I was so tired. Called my wife immediately. She got to the hospital. Never again would she leave that hospital. I went this last time. She slept there. Had her sisters run her shop while she was there. And I pray she never has to go to the hospital for anything other than she, she had her ultrasound done. I'm there. Because on that, the one time when, when uh, she was pregnant with gave me, our 13-year-old, every time I'm there, the one time I couldn't be there because I had to teach or, or, or whatever, uh, they told her, oh, your child, ma'am, has a, a Down syndrome. You know, she's pregnant, vulnerable, so she crying. She calls me. Sit down, babe. I said, what's going on? She said, oh, she said the baby has Down syndrome. I said, get the fuck out of here. They're lying, uh, bullshit. And if the child does have it, we're just dealing with it. We'll raise the child to damn what they're talking about. Don't worry about them. We ain't giving the baby amniocentesis, none of that shit. Damn that, don't trust that, right? We didn't trust it. He's saying the baby had Down syndrome, right? Gave me is 13 years old and is a sophomore in high school. Does not have Down syndrome. My mother said, if y'all had to believe them, we'd have lost our good baby. Mm-hmm. See, that, that that's so. I wasn't there with her that one time. That'll never happen again. If I got class and she got to think, well, class, somebody else is going to have to teach or is going to have to wait until I'm back from that. Never will I leave her in the hands of doctors that I'm not there. Not going to happen. So my advice to y'all, make sure you got somebody who's there to advocate for you. When I had my teeth pulled, b right here, he could tell you he was there. My wife couldn't be there. She was out of the country. b was there with me. I wasn't going to be there by myself. <laughs> sitting there. You know, damn that. And even at one point, I think, didn't they tell you you couldn't be in the room where they, while they were pulling? I don't, I don't remember. I think I, I don't remember. I don't I, think I left it, dude. Uh, I think I, I think they made me, they think they made me at one point. I think at one point, yeah. They might have, I'm right outside or something. I'm like, hey, look, Cause, yeah, because when I, once I, now when I woke up, uh, he was, well, not really woke up, but once they were done, he was right there. Right. So, you know, I was kind of out of, I don't know if you left or not, but make sure that uh you got somebody with you damn that uh Kunle had his job pulled one time and uh we were there me and the other going with there when he had because he he gets the gas so he was out of it. you know this i gotta say this this is this has been on my spirit this whole show but it's kind of um it's, it's connected in a way i i just gotta say man i i, I how, how, how do I put this? Um, you know, it goes along with what Bob was saying. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to believe things. That some stories sometimes is um, so because people make false claims so much and things like this. But um, 
I just want to say, you know, be careful, ladies out there, be careful with the men that you are surrounding yourself with. I, I realize now this, I'm just realizing this to recently that a lot of men, they, they're not, the, the way this man might come off to me, he may be a totally different animal when he's by himself with women. And this is something I'm just finding out about people that I, that I know of and stuff, you know, just going and, and talking to different women. I found out this dude I know, that I know, thought I knew really good, not a not family, not a close, close friend, but just somebody I knew. And I hear from different women how uh, aggressive he is with, with women. And it's totally shocking to me. And it just, make, it just makes me think while we were just talking, you know, because she was just telling me, this is one of my close friends was telling me how she she messed with that dude. They they kissing another when they was young, you know what I'm saying? And how aggressive he was trying to hold her down and stuff. Then I hear a story 15 years later from a girl that don't know the next girl. Oh, yeah, I don't like him. He tried to be too aggressive. But I'm like, and I hear it from a, a, another girl just because I happen to be home on a on a class reunion. And, and, and a lot of people together that wouldn't normally be together. And it just made me think, which got me thinking now, you know, just, we, you just don't know people. You know, sometimes we don't know, we don't know. I found sometimes a person may come to me and be a totally different guy because he around men than he is going to be around women. And I hear that in different ways that I always knew, like, you know, guys act a certain way. They go around women, they suck their thumb and then ask the girl to pet their head or something. Shit they never do. I never, nigga, soft as hell, but I don't, you know, I never thought about it. it. It goes in different ways. So just watch these men, over aggressive men. Don't be afraid to uh, to tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? Don't go 15 years like my homegirl did and that bothered her all this time. I never knew why she always got quiet when a, a, a certain person's name came up. It's, you know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's a way, that's a yeah, that's know. very true. That's a good point. It's the way you can know people. And, and and I rock with you on that, Billy. Uh, but when you say you, you don't know people, you, you do, and it's consistency. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, let me just say that. My close people, my circle, I know them. I'm saying, somebody was to say that about Bobo, I, mean, I ain't hearing that shit. I, I say it's length of time and consistency. Yes. And that's what any, that, that's why you, you can't just, I got put it. So, that's what I was saying. When you were, when you were talking about the dude being aggressive, uh, and, and, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's length of time consistency, and it's something else. There's some. So, well, well, one, don't deny signs that you see. Right. Because a friend of mine, well, no longer thought he was a friend of mine. We were known him since high school. Uh, we, we were real close. Um. Until when in college, college age, you know, they went to a different college from me. But when we come home, he's dating this girl who we knew she grew, grew up around him. But well, he ended up raping her. And the way he described, it, I said, "Man, you raped that girl, man. Man, what? You ain't, we ain't got nothing to talk about no more." So all my friends on me, man, you know, you gonna do this to Jay? Blah blah blah, blah right? I said, "Man, he raped his sister." The, the way he described it, she she said she didn't want to do nothing. He did it anyway. My friend, oh, you know how girls are. And the dude, and he had told me, man, you know, they uh, teased, we take, and I wrote that in the film. The villain in the film says the same thing. I got it from his ass. I said, tease, we take, what the hell wrong with you? So I had broke off my friendship. My friends on me, man, you, you, you know you're a good brother, and blah, 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 blah. And then the sister got pregnant by him. They formed a, they had a relationship. She, she got pregnant by him. She was his woman, his fiance. And uh, I didn't understand how rape causes certain damage. And a lot of times a woman will end up with their attacker same as the munchausen syndrome where 
you're uh not munchausen what was it called the um stockholm stockholm syndrome you're, 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 you're kidnapped or whatever and you begin to empathize with the kidnappers sometimes you join that movement that don't mean you're really with it you're, you're so damaging to deal with that damage right you're accepting this as something that you want to be a part of so and that, that happens with a lot of things when people are traumatized of course. so i didn't understand it so i said oh well she got with him so i guess you know i was wrong so we end up friends again this and that until my first wife my ex-wife before we got married he raped her oh without a doubt and told me called me proud because i couldn't make it to this party she had she was upset so she brought a white dude home with her now we, we ain't together like that actually we weren't even together then she was interested in me so she brings her because we were together and she did that it had been over but she i did I, not over like that i'm talking about over I didn't, <laughs> tip alone right she brought the white dude home because she figured that's really gonna get my goat she bring a white dude home like baby i ain't even had sex with you so do what you do i won't have a sex with you now you know you know mm-hmm. she brings the white dude home and the white dude's with the white girl so Jay's there because he thought I was gonna be there. He brings, she brings Jay home for the white girl. White girl, she said, "Man, you know, I told that girl while she's sitting there, I'll slit her damn throat if she don't leave." And she left, man. You know, she he thought that'd make me proud or something. You're like, "Oh man, hell yeah, proud to the people." Like you crazy motherfucker. So he tell her, "I slit your throat." He says she ran out of there, so I'm sitting there and I'm hearing them, you know, do they thing. And it just like got madder and madder and madder. So I waited in the shadow, in the shadows, to do left. And when he left, she closed the door and I jumped on her. And man, I made her do everything, man. Said, man, you know, you you gonna you gonna do this to my boy? I said, I never had sex with her and she wasn't my woman. So what you talking about? You weren't defending me. You attacked this sister. Don't use me to justify it, punk. And that was it. I was done with them, right? Well, stuff works out. And, and really, to be honest, I, I married my first wife because I felt bad that I introduced her to this clown. Mm. So we and that 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 cause always ripples without throughout our relationship. But at our wedding, this fool shows up. And I said, because the brothers who were there were going to kill him, I said, my gift to you, brother, is life. Mm. Nobody's going to harm nobody at my wedding. Because he's trying to talk to her and all this. At first, I was just like, you know, just ignore him. But he tried to talk to her every time she would go up to get some food. And so that was it. They they grabbed him up and shit. He was done. I I said, my gift to you is life. Somebody... let me see you again, though, because if I see you walk in the street, I don't care if you with your mama, I don't care if you whip your wife, whoever, if you ever get married, your children, I'm going to harm you. So he left. That was it. I thought that's it. Until the pandemic, We're talking 30 years later. And he hits me up during the pandemic on Facebook. Um, we, we, we need to talk. You got to talk to me unless you're going to be a bitch still. And talk. So now you didn't got some cojones because it's been 30 years. And he's at a keyboard. Right. And a key- I, I wrote with him back. <laughs> I said, brother, I'm still me. 30 years later, I'm still me. You still you. I said, you don't know that I know that you caught a sister and meticulously beat all the teeth out of her mouth. This is him. He's worse now. I said, you are Jack the Ripper. I'm just a ripper. I'll tell you apart. If you write to me again 
and you are disrespect y'all out your mouth and call me a bitch. I'm going to do all to you for every woman you've harmed. I'm going to do to you what you deserve for every last one of them. And I'm going to let you live so you can always know as you're sucking through a straw for the rest of your days that you should not have ever, ever in your life touched a woman in harm. And I was doing that, not with me. The, the whole thing, him calling me a bitch, was, was, was just the, the, the crux on it, where you've done so much harm to all these women. And you calling me, a man, a bitch. What are you calling and doing to women now? And why do you want to meet with me and talk? You don't want to meet with me. And so when I said that, he said nothing else. And now I'm blocked, which is cool. I wasn't going to block him. I'm like, hey, we can keep talking, but I'm only going to talk so much. Then I'm going to knock at your door. You wonder, well, how does he know where I live? Because I know where your mama live. I'm, I, I'm concerned, man, a little bit because, not a little bit, but I'm, I'm just concerned because this is one of those things where, you know, you see somebody from a distance and they and they like a, a ladies' man from a distance. You know what I'm saying? And then you get close up and you see these things. So it's the last thing I'm gonna say about it. So I saw that person on one of those nights while I was home. Again, this I was home for my class reunion. So everybody's getting drunk, right? So I see dude, I'm I'm kicking it with not kicking it with him by ourselves, but we in a, a group of dudes. So he drunk, and it's this fine chick on, on the screen. I don't know who it was or whatever, a, a woman, and he's really drunk, and he looks at the girl. I swear, this was a break, this is a quick break in his whole demeanor. He said, yo, she looks so good, man. I would just go up to her and grab her by her neck, man. And then he stopped. He stopped. He said, I will walk up to her and grab her by her neck. And then he just stopped. And yeah, a girl walked up beside me. And he just stopped. And I was like, why you ain't finished what you what you about to say? He's like, oh, nothing, man, nothing. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? You know, the girls like to be choked and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I'm not denying that. It's just the way he went into what he was, like, that's the first thing he thought about. And it just, just, it just makes me, I, I just, um, all I will say about this, and I want to, I don't want to stay on too long. I didn't, I, didn't, I had to say something. I just want to say, you know, I can't do nothing about that about these guys that's being overly aggressive towards women because I can't, I don't see them doing it. They're not going to ever tell me. They're not going to tell Baba, nothing like that. But I would just urge you, urge women, because he's not, from what the three women that said, I don't know how many women he may have went too far. These three women just say he was so aggressive, I had to get away from him. He was trying to hold my arms. We started kissing. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Like, that's too much. That's could have been rape. How many women just gave in, not want to, like, I don't know, but I, I just urge, urge women not to accept that. If that happens to you, if you, once you get away, tell somebody, somebody will do something. Tell them uh, the, the type of man that you feel will do something in your defense. If you don't have family members that, that or if you don't have family members, you feel like they, they have it in them, let somebody know. Just don't don't hold that in. That's all I want to say about that. That's an important thing that you brought up, Eli. I appreciate you speaking on it. Um, I wanted to ask you, Baba, the, the person who you're talking about, prior to you hearing about him raping someone, what were your feelings about him? What what did you think about him? Did was there any kind of indication that you thought he might do something like that? Was he cruel to animal? You know what I'm saying? Anything like that? Oh, no, that was none. That you know, there was no textbook, anything. The only indication, and I it still wouldn't have made me think he was a rapist, especially a violent rapist the way he is. Uh he this sister that we knew, a sister I took to the prom, to her prom. So if she's watching, I want you to know that he, he did this. And, and her brother knows me uh, well, too. Um, 
he stole her panties to masturbate with. So he was a weirdo. Um, he went to the house to do some work with a family, and then he went in her room, stole her panties, and was telling us. So, you know, if, if it's a secret, then you, you, you see, like, this school got somebody's panties in here, and you got... You may think something strange, but then he's sharing it with you. So you you think, okay, he just got a kink. Right. And I said then, I said, man, you taking the girl's panty, you wild, man. But, well, you know, I, I, I said, what, you go in the laundry? No, in her room. And I, not out of her drawer. He said, you know, I got off the floor because I wanted her used panties. Like, oh. I feel you, friend. So he has that, that kink, but that doesn't equal rapist. Right just a, 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 a weirdo, right? Uh, right. I knew you, a, a brother down here who, and we trained with him before, who sniffs, like sniffing the toilets at work for time women when they go to the bathroom. Is he a rapist? No, he ain't never written as far as I know. But that's weird. But that's oh, yeah. rapist. But if he came to my house, believe me, I'd be watching. If a sister went to the bathroom and he went behind her, I'm like, hold on, man, I gotta use it real quick. This dude, the dude that I'm talking about gave me, I wouldn't I would have never expect him to be to the point where if a girl saying no, that he's still trying to go a little further and force it to girls he don't know, like. So, I would never expect that. I would expect him to be like, I get, I get women. I, you know, go ahead. You know what I mean? I wouldn't expect him. And that's why I always ask the question: What does a rapist look? Like? Exactly. What does a murderer look like? There is no text. Exactly. Like that, you know, people they they they'll say that you know they they killed animals and, and, and so and so and so and so. I knew a straight up serial killer. Straight up. We wouldn't call him that, but he was a straight up serial killer. Uh, in the in the military, the military is wrought with serial killers. Hmm. Well, when you talk to him, you say, "God damn!" And they enjoy killing cats. They can do it legally. Up under that banner, I'm killing for the military. I'm telling you, that was some folks. Uh, if you read the book Bloods, there's a brother in there, Eugene Woodley. He was special forces too. He was killing for, and they call him Crazy Eugene because you know you're in the military. They just let you get away with Crazy Eugene. Uh, a person walked in him, Eugene, hit me with this axe. He like it's a joke. He said, "Okay, boom, hit do with the axe." You know, maybe he, we he gotta. Was, he would shoot people until and, and, and shoot them and watch their heads disappear because he's shooting them so much. And that's what he would enjoy. You got people like that out there. But they got families. I said you you some people you know that they, they, they are seriously damaged. I mean, you know, more than me. Y'all know and, and probably seen me when I'm talking about the military and I don't even go into specifics. I start crying. So you got, you know, we've been damaged. Uh, a brother from England told me uh, he, was, he was in their SAS, which is their special ops. He said, you know, being in the military, everybody I know, it causes a damage to their soul. And we back in the river we doing the workshop. We're in the back crying. We went so nobody else could see us because we, we're talking about something other people may not understand. And we're back there crying because we, we understand, damn. We're damaged. Even to this day, we know we're damaged. And that was just a few years ago. I don't know if you remember when the brother from England came to teach the workshop. Mm. And so, like, damn. So imagine folks behind me that they, oh. they, they, they look like they're functioning. Right. So gotta be, everybody got to be careful. Men, women, you got to just yeah. gotta keep your eyes open and be careful of what's out here man and 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 if people tell you so and so did such and such to me at least look at it yeah right i'm gonna see if i can find like um you know talk to some uh 
psychologists or whatever, see if there's any tell signs for aggressive men, something that we can give y'all some type of information He's prone to this or prone to that. Because the only thing I could think of with dude that I know is that he an asshole, but shit, I'm an asshole. I'm just not that type of asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, 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 you know, I can't put my hand finger on nothing to take make him different. We, we can't excuse that. Right, yeah. I, I was looking at a comment. Because then we do. Excuse what? Uh, about you know well he's just a he's just a clown he a jerk he acts like that that's the type of jerk he is the type uh, they do that people do that for racist he's a man of his time mm, right like about hp lovecraft's racist punk ass he's he was just a man of his time because you like a goddamn mm. science fiction fantasy story it's okay for him to be a racist and and, and, and right. talk about you know niggas and all it's okay because you like this thing, it's okay because you like this dude, because this dude funny, because mm. so and so, because R. Kelly could sing great songs, that he could get away with kidnapping and rape. He can get away with that. Now, the family members who allow and I, this is my opinion, you know, I'm an older dude. I already know what you're going to say. The, the, the men especially who allowed their daughters to be taken by this nigga and in Chicago and you know where he's at and you can't get your child out of there? Many parents brought their daughters to this man. And, and, and one, Many one, parents. Two parents, they have, they were on stage, they dancing, she da they yay, she with them, and the lights go out. Mm -hmm. She disappears and he disappeared with their daughter. They, where's our daughter? Where? And she she been with him for years now. Now she crazy talking about she she hate her family. Look, man, mm -hmm. if the person took my my family, took a person a member in my family, which wouldn't happen to me like that. But if R. Kelly had my child and they in Chicago, sitting in that studio, you telling me uh, unless you're just a loner, <laughs> I don't ask y'all for much. <laughs> I will be asking y'all come to Chicago with me. And I'm gonna introduce you to some folks that else that I know, and we're gonna get my baby out that motherfucker. Yes, yeah, well. <laughs> like what? Oh, they, they had three security guards. Okay, they had three security guards. Now what? <laughs> no way. Are you keeping what? You don't even gotta say. You've already gave. You already gave your um. Your um. I don't know what you call what you your uh your thing about uh if the government or anybody mess with your children. So you already gave that. So, yeah, <laughs> Kelly, yeah, yeah. R. Kelly walk his ass on the stage, <laughs> like your baby, and he walks off the stage. Disclaimer. That's I, what I, I don't understand. So when the brother said, you know, people not talking up, or you know, uh, they're, they're afraid of being called a simp or a pick me. The ones who don't talk up. The one, the men especially who don't talk up, who don't do nothing, they are simps. Yeah. That, so that so that they're afraid of being called one. They are one because they're not talking up. So on on, on, on I'll say that part on that now. Uh, you know. Uh, so because y'all, I say, think what kind of environment do we live in? Yes. What kind of environment do we live in where our men and women? But it's all over the world. I asked, are you from Nigeria before, Yapo? Because I know some folks in Nigeria. A dude from here comes and rapes a 13-year-old boy in a certain city in Nigeria. And he left that country and came back to the United States? Alive? For real? And you know he raped him. And now he's talking junk, like they can't do shit to me, blah, 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 blah. Without saying I raped the boy, he's saying, but he, the way he's speaking, that I, I did it and nothing can be done to me. And it's people here defending him because they like him, because he's a Puerto Rican dude that can speak Yoruba. Mm. Speak it fluently. So they're so impressed. You know so much about african traditions so they're impressed and they're so impressed that it's okay that he rapes a child and so it's even women defending this mm -hmm. Woo, boy see that shit pisses me off 
It's people I know defending this clown. And it's people in, in Africa who are saying, you know, he raped them and they're, you know, giving proof and this and that. But it's people who are still defending him. And they got to defend him now because they look like some punks for letting him rape their baby. So this is all over the world, y'all, that women and children are in danger and men and women are not standing up. We all just want to be the nice person and get along and, and not call people on their violent bullshit uh, with, within the quote unquote conscious community. There was this guy who was raping uh, sisters who were coming into his organization. I think he was in New York. And they did, they had a whole, it was so bad, they had a whole event about this clown. They dealt with it here on Black Power Media. This shit is rampant. That's why I love us, man. And when I say us, I mean the warriors in Egbe Ogun that I know of myself personally. And like, and like uh, Wumi was saying, yes, it's important to find your tribe. Because if I didn't have a tribe of men and women that I could count on and be able to talk about stuff like this, like when we the show's over, we still talking. And they understand when I say, man, I want to chop this motherfucker head off of this type of shit that he's doing. And they understand what I'm saying. I can't, you can't buy that. And, um. That's what I would suggest for a lot of you people, uh, a lot of folks out there. Find your tribe, just like she said, people that you can that you can really move with, and that you can protect each other. It's important. Franny Prince says, "Look what happened to Tara Reid when she went public about Biden molesting her. An entire media apparatus smeared her and called her a liar. That's the common thing. So when the world is calling you a liar." Because they like old Sleepy Joe's ass. Right. Well, they like whoever, this comedian. Or... You're in danger. But the one thing that you got to know, sisters and brothers, I hope, anyway, that you have family you can rely on. Now, it's hard to come at Sleepy Joe. He's the president of the United States and he got the Secret Service behind him. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to go up and, you know. Uh, if it was Obama, it'd be easier. You know, you could just get a ballroom dress and, and you could dance yourself right in front of you, right, right, right to the White Joe, House. Well, Sleepy Joe, you can get you a, a, a woman who will hit her who look like a girl. She got to be 12. She got to look like she's about 12. She like, right, and Sleepy Joe get done. But <laughs> she probably get done too. There's there's a movie, it's with it's with uh, Clint Eastwood where it was a person gonna kill the president. God, what is it called? And he was former Secret Service. I forget what it's called. And in it, the killer says, "If you want anybody, you just have to be determined enough and willing to die." He said, "I'm I'm gonna kill the president because I'm willing to die and I'm determined." And that is the goddamn truth. So it ain't like nobody can't be gotten in it. All of a sudden here, people out there, Sleepy Joe, Kevin Hart, whoever can be gotten. If somebody, but they probably gonna die when you messing with somebody on that, with that level of protection. Uh, that's why a lot of people wouldn't come forward. I know some people person who were going to sue the United States military. They, they tried. And a lawyer told them, wait, wait, wait you, you suing the... Nobody's calling the person back. The lawyer told them, you trying to sue the U.S. Army? Hmm. <laughs> lawyer going to call you back? He said, I'm telling you, I ain't handling it. That remind me of the dude talking about... <laughs> I want to yeah. live. That remind me... So, Go ahead. You know, so people don't, people are afraid. There are more people afraid than not afraid. No doubt. So when you when you look at that, that's why I say I hope 
you have family that's willing to protect you. But when you when you damaged by cats with that level of power, we can joke about Sleepy Joe and all that. He's still the president of the United States, so he has a lot of power and protection behind him. It's hard to get justice against cats like that. I ain't talking about killing them or nothing. That's a form of justice, but I'm talking about really getting just. It's hard against cats like that. The first step is just speaking the truth, being not being afraid to come out right. with it. That's the first thing you got to do because nobody's going to know if you don't say that. And they protect some other folks. Right. And I was I was going to say there's a comment by Franny French. Um, this is from a while ago, but uh, after when Belay started talking about this, um, she said that's part and parcel of how men like that work, and that they depend on secrecy. It's, it, you have to scroll up a little bit to right, see I've it. Seen that. Right, and uh, what I was going to say is that. Uh, Hold on one second. There's another part to this. She said, and good men need to know that they know bad men and to believe women when they say you're a friend. Right. And I, I, it, it's, I saw the truth. I didn't see that part of where her, say, her saying that, but I saw the truth in that. I believe it's, it's a woman. That sounds like someone who has had an experience or who knows someone who's had an, a real experience. Because a lot of times, like, like good men, they don't know that you know, they have these kind of people among them because you've never been in an experience. You've never been in a in that kind of circumstance with him. Your sister hasn't been in that kind of circumstance with him or someone close to you. So you don't know that this is the type of dude that you're around. Just like that's why I was asking you, Baba, if the person who you knew who ended up being a rapist, if there was any telltale signs, you know, because a lot of times you don't know that that's what that person is like. So, you know, and then the thing about going to men that you know is a lot of men is, are not like you, the both of you. They don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? They, they haven't been trained. They don't have that thing in them that tells them that they should be doing something about this. They might listen to what you say, but they don't know how to go forward after that. That's why you know? Butterfly says that that's, uh woman says find your tribe the mind is important to me if this you know, is yeah. alone yeah if for this, sure if this but for women who alone. especially young women who haven't found their tribe yet you know i mean that can be a difficult situation when yeah. when you're in your 40s or you know your 30s or whatever yeah you understand you know okay i should have said something i should have done this and this and that that's why those kinds of men don't mess with older women Right. They mess with the women who just got out of high school or, you know, someone who's in, in their 20s. Or if it's an older woman, it's a, it's, a, it's a isolated. She's one of those women that don't have many friends. Right, exactly. And look for the loners. Exactly. So, you know, it's just it's an important thing to bring out. You hear about nuns getting raped. It's because nuns are, are a... Uh, Anomaly, if you will, in this society, they're, they're a minority for sure. Right. For so sure. they don't have it, and they're not looked at as having a strong group of people that'll fight back. Right. So, although in the Catholic Church, they have Opus Day, which will put you in the ground. Right. Right. But mainly not for, for nuns, though. <laughs> they about that money. They go out there. <laughs> That money that you know, shit. They 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 they're, they're not even about the Pope. They're about the money that the Catholic Church brings in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you if you touch their money, right? Yeah, do I say this all the time. You know, like she said about good men. You know, I'm gonna call myself a good man until somebody can prove otherwise. And the thing about it is, I'm naive as a person. I I can I admit that a lot of times. It's hard for me. It was hard for me to believe that regular people. You know, I'm as regular as perception, of course, but you know, somebody that's not out of their mind would be doing stuff like this. Like, I wouldn't expect, I just don't expect it's maybe because it ain't in me. I, it's hard for me to see it. I, I had to tell Bob in the months, like, I have to watch certain things on video so I will believe that this is how some people are. Like, I have to see people be deceitful. I just posted the thing about people opening up this lady saying, Will you watch my bag? to random people 
and and as soon as she leave it, they go through it, and the paint stuff blow up in their face. I have to watch certain stuff like that to believe there's people out here. It's just just for no reason. Like they ain't hungry, they ain't nothing. They just want to. They just bad motherfuckers. Just some wicked motherfuckers out here. And sometimes hey, that, wicked. That, that, can, that can end in your demise. If, just so you know, somebody leaves a bag with you. You say, "Hell no, you can't leave a bag." I was at the airport and somebody said, "Can I leave my suitcase with you?" Oh, sir! What? <laughs> no, it's the main place. Like hell no! I ain't trying to get blown up or or accused of being that's a right, <laughs> right. And so made you a, a drug mule. My whole point is, is that it's you may go to someone and they may, and you may feel like they like she said they don't know what to do. Well, if you if you feel that way. I know it's hard. Please try to just go to someone else and tell as many people as you can until you feel like something is happening, some traction is happening. And, and that's a hard thing to say. That's yeah. I agree. That's all you can do. But that's the only that, advice I that's got. One right. of the most difficult things to do. Yeah. You know, in those situations, especially for a young woman. But yes, so but just know that say, women have the power to make men move. You know what I'm saying? It can be an incident going on over there, a bunch of men looking, and one woman walk over there and say, ain't nobody going to do nothing? Oh, somebody's chest is about to poke out. Somebody going to do something. Let, let me say something on that, and then I want to read Prince Prince, and then we're going to have to go because uh, Ear Doctor's show comes on. And, like, oh, and, and shout out to Franny Friends. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I forgot what you were saying. Oh, oh, about making you move, and uh, we're not going to Men can do that too if they're wise. Me and Big Mike, who you all have trained with, uh, my friend from Chicago who's a martial artist, on the bus. We're sitting on the bus and an older man on the bus and these dudes, you know, and they, we all in our 20s, but the dude in the 20s messing with him. And um, this man's about 70. Oh yeah, elders can do it. And they messing with him. You know, punk man, I don't know why they messing with this man. And he said, look, you see them two big dudes back there? <laughs> me. And so now we look like some chumps if we don't protect them, right? And I said, damn right. <laughs> dude looked and like, oh, okay, you know. And I said, that dude's wise. He <laughs> called us to task, and if we didn't do it, we'd be embarrassed. Right. You know, and so that was a smart move. So you mm. can be moved. And you can move people as long as you're wise and you're doing it with some ethics. You got that's why political education is important. Right. Not yeah. moving people the wrong way. Now, Franny French said women learn the hard way to see the signs, but men who were molested as children could probably see the signs of bad men as well. Um, I understand what you're saying. I'll say this: I was molested by a woman when I was a child. Maybe men who were molested by men. Maybe they right. Were. I think that's what she means. Because I was molested by a woman as a child, and I had to learn to see the signs. Right. Still taught to see the signs, as opposed to what I went through. That's not saying what I went through wasn't traumatic. It was, but it didn't traumatize me to the point where I learned to see the signs, learn how to maneuver. Right, right. It doesn't happen to me again. Right, right. Because you were so young. And, and, and yeah, and I'm not diminishing when men are raped right. by women at all. And don't translate what Baba said a minute ago as saying, um, my brother gonna beat your ass when he come here today. Don't do that. Don't put on don't <laughs> don't, don't don't broadcast what's about to happen. No, and don't, hey, these, these motherfuckers about here gonna get your ass. Don't, don't you, love have, you know, there have been people who've done that and they've been found with the cords wrapped around their neck phone cord from the old days. There, there have been women who hit a TPO, temporary order of protection. And they've been found with that TPO stuffed in their mouth, dead. I'm, this is real, yeah. no exaggeration. So don't paperwork, no intimidate, and don't even threaten. Train, train, and do. Right. When you yeah. have to do, do it hardcore. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I knew we have to. It happened, it happened to me when I was four five years old before uh my sisters discovered the person that was doing it and took care of their business yep. 
Um, I know we have to go. I just want to encourage everyone to do their research on activated charcoal and just keep in mind that it can also sap uh, or it can diminish the medication in your system. So don't take it. Right. Don't take it when you're taking medication, but it's good for food poison, a lot of things. So do your research on that, please. And much love to everyone. Love y'all. Stay black or whatever it is that you may be. Be safe out here. Be diligent. And we'll see you in the next warrior class. Peace. Peace.